Hi, um, I will present uh, this poster titled Ayuka Instrumentation. Um, through this poster, we want to uh, share with you what uh, are the different instruments and uh, engineering works that we are doing in Ayuka uh, that, uh, that are useful in either developing instruments or, or are used in different uh, telescopes around the world. So there are different kinds of things we do. One is, as I said, building instruments, which includes different aspects of optical engineering, mechanical engineering, thermal engineering, and a lot of electrical engineering. Then aside from building dedicated instruments, we are also involved in developing the various controllers and electrical um, systems, which are used in uh, various facilities around the world. So I'll try to give you a glimpse of what we are working on. Um, so, a major project that we are working on in Nayuka is called uh, DOTIPS, which stands for Devastal Optical Telescope Integral Field Spectroscope. So, this is an in spectrograph instrument that is being developed to be uh, m placed on Devastal Optical Telescope. Devastal is a, a mountain site near Nanital, and uh, this is a spectrograph which take basically measures the spectra of objects and uh, the unique aspect of this spectrograph is that uh, it's what is called a integral field spectroscope usually spectrographs uh, they can measure the spectra of only one object at a time because because but because of the unique design of this um, instrument uh, at one time 16 spectrographs 16 objects uh, for, for 16 objects, we can find the spectra. Uh, so, for example, uh, the image here shows a typical what the, typically what the telescope might see. There are 16 objects, and um, the the spectrograph elements can move to all these 16 places at one go, and then uh, pass it through the optics of the instrument and create generate a spectrum. This involves multiple robotic arms as well because uh, the placement of the 16 objects will change depending on the orientation on the sky. Some areas, the 16 objects will be very close. Some areas, it will be spread away. So there's a robotic arms, 16 robotic arms, which move around to place the, uh, what we call the fibers, which take the light from these objects for the telescope. And these move around. So that's a unique technology as well that is not used, that has not been developed in India beforehand. Uh, the other instrument that we had developed some time back is called Robopole. Uh, it stands for Robotic Polarimeter in Crete. So a polarimeter basically tries to find what is the state of polarization of uh, light coming from a star or other astronomical objects. And uh, so some in around 2013, uh, the lab in Ayuka had built this polarimeter which is used in uh, Skinakas Observatory in Crete in Greece. Since then, it has been used to carry out a unique survey of the sources called blazars. These are very one of the most uh, energetic sources in the universe, and a lot of the physics is unknown. And the polarimeter was developed to probe some of the unanswered questions about the blazars, and a lot of interesting uh, knowledge has come out from the survey. And a successor to Wallop, success, successor to Robopole is called Wallop. Uh, basically, it has a larger field of view. Uh, the, by field of view, we mean what is the size of the sky that uh, the parameter can look at one go. So, uh, Wallop stands for Wide Area Linear Optical Parameter, and there are two Wallops being developed. One for uh, the one meter telescope in South Africa and the other for the 1.3 meter Skinakas telescope in Greece. So basically in Skinakas, uh, Wallop will um, succeed R Robopole. That's a very unique instrument because uh, it has a large field of view. And for with this, for the first time, astronomers will be able to create a polarization map of the sky. Meaning, uh, for example, right now what we know through the maps of astronomy is that at a given position on sky, there's a particular star of what brightness, but we don't know what is the polarization of those stars in large map. So because it's a large field of view, 
in about four or five years of time, we will have a continuous map of a large part of the sky. And there are a lot of strong science motivations to build this instrument. One is, um, of course, to create a polarization map. And polarization is created because of um, dust clouds in combination with magnetic fields in our galaxy, in the interstellar medium of the galaxy. So such a map will become a unique uh, probe to understand the formation as well as evolution of dust clouds in the galaxy, which is um, which has a lot of unanswered questions right now. For example, how are they formed? Uh, how does magnetic field affect the dust clouds, etc. And um, there are other science goals as well, but I'll skip that. And although it was initially planned to be commissioned in 2019, uh, currently the plan is to commission it, uh, meaning put it on sky after f uh, finishing the, all the development in later this year in 2021. Um, the other instrument that is currently being commissioned is uh, what is called the um, uh, RoboAO instrument. So, adaptive optics is uh, basically a method used by astronomers to achieve much better uh, images than what atmosphere would allow us. Atmosphere, because it is a large stretch of around 100 kilometers and uh, there is often winds and temperature variations through, the, through those 100 kilometers. The images that we get through, get at the telescope is not what it would have been if there was no atmosphere. Atmosphere clears a blurring effect. It's similar to how if there's a fire in front of us, because of the air come rising because of the fire, there's a um, haziness we see in the images, in the background uh, objects. Same is the effect of atmosphere. So to correct that, what astronomers use is called an adaptive optic system. So basically, we uh, it uses a laser to shoot through the atmosphere, and that is reflected back. and Whatever the effect of atmosphere is, we try to calculate using that reflected light from the laser and apply that correction. So, uh, so RoboAO is uh, a second version of an instrument that is already being used in uh, um, California. Um, and it was built in collaboration with Ayuka. Now, Ayuka wants to develop its own RoboAO system for the 2 meter telescope in Girawali. Uh, so it has multiple components uh, for understanding what the atmosphere does, which is shooting the laser. And then after shooting the laser, there are multiple optical systems like uh, wavefront sensors and mirrors and deformable mirrors to correct all those effects. So the picture here shows what the picture, the first picture, 3A shows what is an image that you would get without adaptive optics just because of atmospheric spreading effect and the right image shows what you would get after atmospheric correction after the correction with adaptive optics and this is the first version of RoboAO which is currently on the Palomar telescope in California and the rightmost picture shows the laser shot from the 2 meter telescope in Nayuka um, it's a UV laser that is fired yeah uh, and and the work that we are doing right now is uh, related to adaptive optics, which is uh, the product is called Spark. So usually uh, supercomputers are needed to calculate uh, the atmosphere's um, effects. So when we get the data from the laser guides are uh, in an adaptive optic system, it's the data is so huge that it takes supercomputers. That is primarily because we need to do the atmospheric correction like at around 1000 times a second so that is a frequency of 1000 hertz uh, that is primarily because uh, the atmosphere changes at that rate so usually supercomputers are needed to do all the computations in real time but um, as you can see that is not feasible for a small telescope which doesn't have that big a budget so fpgas are uh, so spark is what is based on based on what is called fpgas and uh, which stands for free programmable gate arrays and uh, the whole computation then is done through fpgas and the size of the whole computing system reduces significantly and that was demonstrated through the spark um, product and as you can see on the figure four all of the spark 
all of the spark components which calculate everything for the adaptive optics correction is encompassed in a small box placed in an optical table um, so and other another product we are developing in ayuka uh, or an instrument that we are developing in, in ayuka is called what is called the ir camera so this works in the infrared wavelengths as the name is um, suggestive of and um, the advantage of this uh, camera is that it has very low noise uh, because of the different controllers that is being used developed in house in ayuka and uh, these has now been used in multiple places so one is in salt salt is a big telescope in south africa then there is sorsi in spain in grand canary in grand telescope canary which is a biggest telescope on earth on earth right now biggest optical telescope then uh, miradas is upcoming instrument in uh, gtc again and uh, lmir cam is another ir camera in the large binocular telescope in arizona so a lot of people a lot of observatories are using the compact eye camera that has been developed in ayuka because of its low noise characteristics and the third important uh, and the last important uh, component but not i mean the last one in this poster but not necessarily the last one that we are doing in the lab is what is called idsac which is a ayuka digital array controller system so because photons are measured uh, through what is called ccd so electron the photon comes hits uh, the semiconductor uh, chip and the electron is generated and reading that electron electron counts the number of electrons that is generated because of the photons hitting the um, array that also involves its own noise because it's electrical circuit so every noise becomes added to the overall measurement uncertainty so and especially this becomes a problem when we have to read large format ccds which can be something like 16 megapixel and uh, so the ayuka has come up with this um, controller card which um, measures the uh, actual electrons created because of photons with high accuracy is low noise and these controllers are right now being used at multiple places again uh, one is a 3.6 meter Devasil telescope in India, then in, in one meter SEO telescope, and other instruments as well. Yeah, thank you.